Can I ask, it sounds horribly personal, this, but in relation to the fact that a lot of people are leaving a taxpayer-funded service as a result of supposed poor pay, what are you paid? Yeah. Well, it varies depending on what stage of training you're at. So um, typically uh, somebody goes to a medical school for five years and then after you've done that sort of fifth year of medical school, you graduate as a foundation year one doctor. And that is roughly £14 per hour, which could equate to around £29,000 for that first year. It goes very slightly uh, the following year and then throughout training very slightly up, up until you're earning roughly £28 per hour. Um, and that would be a salary of around £58,000 a year. OK, all right. And is there a possibility to become a more specialised doctor and earn quite a bit more? My point here being, is it like any career where you start out and you gradually work your way up? The pay scale. So what I've explained just now, it starts off about £14 per hour, and actually £58 per hour is roughly what those higher, more specialised doctors are earning. That could be a neurosurgeon with more than 10 years' experience. But to be honest, it's not just about what we're earning per hour. We have to consider that we go to medical school for five years. Many of us graduate with up to a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt and this includes real debt credit cards overdrafts bank loans to help fund those data years of university and then we enter a job earning this amount and you know we're working weekends nights bank holidays taking on immense responsibility and many junior doctors are struggling to manage financially so how does a load of doctors who like to come on and say they've got a load of solidarity with the medical community, yeah. with nurses, whatever. How does a lot of them leaving to go and coin it in abroad actually help matters? It's about the, the working conditions. Um, does, that not make working are... conditions just, does that not make working conditions worse because more of you are leaving, so there's fewer of you here in RNHS? Well, the, the doctors who are working and the nurses, many of the people working within the NHS, they're feeling the, the strains that are on the system at the moment. So those waiting times, um, that they're concerned about the provision of care that we can deliver to patients. And there comes a point in, some, in a person's career where they're unable to continue working in that environment. And as a result, going abroad where salaries may be higher mm -hmm. and they're feeling more valued is a much more tempting proposition. Why don't they study abroad to begin with? Well, I mean, I can take myself as an example. I studied in the UK because my plan has been to work as a doctor in the UK. Mm. I went to school here. I went to medical school here. I've been working in the Midlands. And you take it year by year thinking, you know, next year I'll be doing this. In five years time, I hope to be specialised in this area. The plan being in the UK. But as time goes on, that's when you start to real, you really feel the impacts of um, working uh, in a difficult, uh, challenging environment with those levels of pay. Um, but also, interestingly, even when I was at medical school, uh, probably when I was doing work experience before medical school, I had consultants saying to me, this probably isn't going to be the best career for your happiness. Don't do it. But I still did it because I wanted to become a doctor.